G'day folks, we're here with another unboxing. I'm really excited about this one today. It's been a, a game I've really been looking forward to, um, but it's not actually Super Fantasy Brawl. Uh, this is a, a, a game I did an unboxing for just the other day, but I've left this out because it's a ridiculously large box. It's like huge. Uh, it holds about 12 models in it for this giant box here. But I wanted to show you this so that you can see the size of this next game we're looking at today. Uh, and see how big this one is compared to this as well. So we'll just get it up in a sec. Uh, all right, <laughs> so it's almost twice the length of this already insanely large uh, box. So <laughs> this is Tidal Blades, uh, Heroes of the Reef. And it's, it is the deluxe edition. So the normal version I think is in a regular sort of, you know, uh, square sort of sized uh, box, but uh, yeah, the Deluxe Edition is ridiculously long. I'm actually, I think I got a an, an extra expansion. Uh, so I'm hoping that the expansion sort of maybe takes up some of this space and the actual <laughs> the actual box isn't quite this long, but we'll, we'll see when we look inside. But uh, yeah, so let's get into the game itself. Okay, yeah, so there you go. <laughs> we did have an expansion in there. Yeah, you can still see compared to uh, Fantasy Brawl, it's uh, <laughs> still a bit longer, but... Um, I think there's a lot more packed into this this game than uh, than the uh, the empty air that's uh, taken up a lot of space in this one. So yeah, let's get into Tidal Blades: Heroes of the Reef. So uh, this is um, yeah deluxe edition. It's by Skybound um, and uh, Druid City Games, um, and it's sort of part one of a, a series of games that are going to be set in this world, hopefully. Um, and the designers are Tim and Ben Eisner, uh, with art done by the uh, Mr. Cuttington team there. Um, yeah, beautiful, beautiful art, really sort of uh, evocative sort of art there. Uh, and the uh, expansion is Angler's Cove. I think it sort of adds some extra, yeah, an extra character and um, extra locations and um, some new mechanics as well. So there we go. Okay, let's have a look at the other side. Um, yeah, so it's a um, sort of dice rolling, dice placement sort of... Um, no, sorry, not dice placement, worker placement, but uh, dice rolling uh, game. Um, you sort of build up your characters with these different sort of uh, dials, representing their different um, um, avenues you can go. You know, you can get more dice or abilities to get more powerful dice or um, play a card to give you different abilities and things like that. So we'll, we'll have a look at that as we get into the box. But um, yeah, this um, deluxe edition comes with uh, figures, minis for the... Um, characters a uh, big dice tray lots of deluxe components here and uh, yeah of course plenty of dice so um yeah let's have a look at it uh, and it is um one to four players um 14 and up it says there 60 to 90 minutes on the on the box there um i think there are a few different modes you can play sort of shorter or longer um and uh yeah so it does have a solo mode as well all right so uh, a little sheet just letting you know what the differences are or what the additions are for the uh, deluxe version, the deluxe components. Um, the rule book, so a big square size rule book. Nice. Yeah, nice, bright, full color, sort of comic, comic style. Um, I wonder if yeah, they, yeah, they sort of explain the explain the game rules uh, in comic form. Um, oh, Edward's uh, he doesn't he doesn't really approve of that. He <laughs> he, would, he would rather some a more old school uh, rule book approach. But yeah, I uh, give him points for trying. Um, the almanac looks like I was going to say looks like maybe story, but oh, this is probably like uh, ex explanations of all the cards and what each card does um yeah okay maybe explain the locations too probably so sort of more in depth in in the rules there um here we have tokens so these would be what you would use in the base game the the regular version um and it looks like they give you those anyway in this version so you can sort of if you prefer to use tokens for any of the pieces you, you've got those Ready to go. Um, oh, let's have a look here. So these are the 
This is the big dice tray, and these are the dice. It's very sturdy. That's a really, really strong, sturdy cover there. That's good. Um, yeah, so you have this tech tree of dice in the game. So you start out with these basic dice, and then you can, if you want to sort of go down the sort of the red path, you can start getting red dice, which can be converted into more powerful red dice, which can be then split into different branches here that are even more powerful again. And then you can go down the blue path um, and, yeah, sort of uh, go through that way. You've got some D8s, I think these are, um, danger dice. So these are, every time you roll the dice, it's a chance something could go wrong or the bad guys could get you or something, I guess. So, um, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, nice and sturdy, good solid. Feels like a really good, good uh, game tray. Nice and easy to pick up the pieces too. Oh, they slide right up the top there. Yeah, that looks like good good ergonomic design. All right, let's keep going. But that, yeah, that looks good. Let's just clip on. Oh yeah, nice and sturdy. Oh, very good. Yeah, nice and snug. That's excellent. It's a really sturdy dice tray there. Um, oh wow, these look really good. What goes here? Uh, so, oh yeah, so these would be the um, bases for the standees. Uh, this ridiculous <laughs> piece, but awesome. Oh, and wow, that's very impressive. That's a dice tray. Check this out, Maisie. Look at that, that's for rolling dice in. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah? Just realized you're wearing your hat inside. You, you need to be wearing that? <laughs> you just like it, don't you? Um, <laughs> mm, here you go. So this... Um, I thought this was going to be like a flimsy sort of, you know, um, plastic, you know, nice sort of gimmick thing, but, you know, really flimsy. But this is actually solid, uh, yeah, solid plastic, hard plastic. That's way more impressive than I thought. <laughs> okay. I was actually, you know, it's pretty awesome, but I was a bit like, oh man, like, think of all the space they could have saved and made this a regular size box if they didn't put this ridiculous thing in there, but... Now I'm very glad that they did. It's even got reinforced rivets here, and yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's made me very excited to play the game. Um, all right, another nice sturdy. These are really good quality trays. These are the nicest quality. Um, I think even for game trays, these are the nicest quality trays I've I've seen yet. So that's nice lid there. That looks like it's designed to hold. Maybe player boards or something on the top there as well, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, any of you who have seen my previous um, videos will know that I do very little research before I rip open these boxes, so I never really go back and sort of double check my facts and stuff. So um, take what I say with a grain of salt, but it looks like a first player marker. Nice shield, some sort of shield there. Uh, the judge, so he sort of travels around and uh, so the tidal blades are uh, like a team of sort of um, Praetorian Guard or, you know, um, the Avengers of this, you know, um, coastal reef world. And um, the setting for the game is that you're sort of um, competing in a tournament to earn your spot in the new tidal blades. And this guy's one of the judges that sort of goes around and watches you uh, pull off all your feats and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Big tortoise man. Excellent. Mm -hmm. This is, I think, a little speedboat. Uh, goes around a little track on one of the boards there. It gives you a sort of bonus action and things like that. That's cool. Waves jetting up behind it there. Um, and these are the characters. So you can have a big crocodile man, Cayman. He's cool. Oh, these would be great to paint. Yeah. Um, I think Druid City and Skybound, they make really good, really good minis. Now this guy, he's actually from the expansion, but if you get the deluxe version, they just sort of chuck him in anyway, his figure, but you don't get his rules unless you also get the expansion, I believe. But then I think a lot, all the stuff that fits in the expansion box, uh, this one here, or under here, I think all of this could be taken out of there and packed into here so that you only use the one box but again um we'll see how that goes we'll see if, see if i'm telling the truth there oh i'm getting ahead of myself here um let's have a look at these 
So each character has a, a full uh, mini, but also like a little bust for the uh, champion track as well. So you can sort of keep track of who's sort of in the lead in terms of the competition um, with the judge. Uh, so that's the little, what is he, a frog or a um, gecko or something? Not sure what he is. Uh, got the human. This is Dust. Oh, do you like her, Maisie? She's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. She's a fierce warrior, just like Anna. Yeah. Yeah. She's pretty. She is pretty cool, huh? Anna's way better than Elsa, right? No. Oh, I almost got away with it. Uh, let's have a look here. Oops. The gecko one? Yeah, I'll get that for you in just a second. And these little um, plastic or acrylic pieces. These are like the uh, little tokens you leave behind as you sort of workers as you as you go around. Is that the that's the turtle bub? Um, what do I do with the here? It is. That's your uh, that's the the frog guy or the. I mean, he's got a tail, doesn't he? What's he got there? Or is that just a sash? Not sure. Anyway, he's some sort of amphibian. Um, Maybe it must be a tail. This guy's like a merman or a fish man, something. He's got like gills and stuff like a sea elf um, and then you got the little uh, axolotl axolotl but he has legs yeah he does he's not like a true fish man he's just kind of like an aquatic man all right um, I'm sure that if you go into the lore of this uh, game you'll find out what he actually is um, yeah and this little character here Can I have a look at this little one little munchkin isn't he? Yeah, I think it might be a girl. I think her name is Echo or Eco or something. Oh, did you hurt yourself then? You all right? No. Okay. Uh, yeah, so each of them sort of had their own little uh, color chips here. And so, yeah. So if you were to go and place him in a location, once you've left him there, you leave this in place to show that you've been to that spot and no one else can take that worker placement spot for the, for the turn. All right, so let's get back into it and have a look at some of these other pieces. Um, so I believe you get a couple of these trays. So this is um, the squishy squishy fruit. This is one of the resources in the game. I think this allows you to roll extra dice or something like that. The more fruit you have, the more sort of energy you have for your actions. So there you go, squishy. I don't know if you can quite see that, but yeah, got a little bit of squish to them. Yeah, cool, excellent. So you get a tray with those in there. Again, another sturdy, nice quality tray. And these are the hard shells. A little bit of a pearlescent sheen to them as well. Nice. Oh yeah, they're very nice. All nice, nice to the touch. Okay, what else have we got? Uh, on this side, we have the hardcover law book. So I'm sure this is where you'll find out all about the the races and the hero. You've got a nice map there of the world. Full colour pages. It goes through a bit of a story at the tournament. What's happening in the world. That's big, um, all these big larger than life locations, big sea monsters you battle against. So I think that's what the tidal blades are for. They're for uh, defending the the people and defending the world from um, uh, big sea monsters and, and things like that, things that would do harm to the, the people. So we've got in here, that's nicely wrapped up there. Um, a lot of protection. The, the cardboard box that came in, the packing crates, I think, had a lot of protection as well. So very good production. Um, so this is one of the the board so instead of having one big main board you have uh this sort of modular sort of set of um boards that you place out um and with the worker placement spot so i think you've got one two three worker placement spots there and this is the one that has the little boat uh track that goes around the outside so you go here do your action um and then you leave one of those little chips on there uh to show that you've done that um yeah, and I think for coming to this location, besides just getting to do this, you also get to do a couple other things that are sort of inherent uh, to this location as well. So that's uh, Lamara Stadium. We've got the Citadel of Time. I think this sort of tracks your, um, it's sort of like the, the basic action spot. Also kind of like, um, I think it sort of has those, 
uh, market of uh, event or challenge cards you can uh, grab from here, which are the sort of like the main way to get points in the game. Uh, you also have uh, the turn tracker here, I think, so that tracks the, the length of the game, and I think that might be, yeah, double-sided, so you can... Uh, it seems to still say four, doesn't it? But um, I think you can sort of have a longer game with, with this side. Um, let's see, what else have we got here? We've got a... Um, uh, this one's not a board, but it's it's card stock, but it feels really nice. It's got a nice little linen finish to it. Um, that's the solo mode sort of rules there, two-player mode as well. So it just gives you the extra rules you'll need for that all in one place. That's pretty handy, I guess. Chronoseum, and if you'll notice, that's the uh, that's what this dice tray is a model of. Is actually the Chronoseum, I think. And um, yeah, so again, you've got your worker placement spots. Uh, and your sort of inherent, maybe this is like your inherent sort of uh, ability that you get when you go there as well. Um, and the Droska Ring, so again, I think this one has a little market of mini cards. Um, and each of the spots you'll notice has a little spot where the judge goes, so he actually travels around throughout the game and if you go where he is, you get sort of extra points in the, in the championship or something like that. Um, so you can see this comes with a lot of these cardboard bits but I don't think it's designed for you to have the cardboard stuff in once you've taken everything out and sort of packed it where it's supposed to go I don't think you need the cardboard bits I think um, and what's, oh that's where the, the monsters come so this is like the monster track so as you're going around competing in the championship the monsters are sort of attacking and that sort of takes your focus away a little bit too so you have to sort of like stop your training and go and defend the city type thing. This is the, I think, the champion track. Oh yeah, here it is. So you stick that together a little bit like a puzzle and makes a champion leadership board sort of thing. Um, yeah. And so obviously by the end of the game you sort of want to be up furthest end to get some extra points and things like that. I think you get sort of bonus points and things as you go along as well. These are the player boards. So they're nice, feel nice and sturdy. Um, they have these dials so you can sort of level up your character in the four different sort of spheres of um, training, I guess. So what have you got? Um, focus, spirit, resilience, and synergy. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got echo here. Mm -hmm. Axel, so that's the fish guy. If you can get a better better look at him with his colour there, yeah. So you, instead of hair, that's actually sort of like um, fins, and he's got a little bit of a sort of funky hand going on there. So yep, not quite human. Uh, but dust, she's actually from the desert, I think. So she's sort of like a foreigner to these um, uh, sort of coastal lands, competing in the in the uh, tournament. I think she's sort of drawn by adventure or something like that. Um, cool. Look at this guy. Must be like the turn tracker or something. Big judge fighting a dragon or something. Or a sea monster. Um, yeah, everything's got its spot, doesn't it? And even this, like even the lid to this actually has a spot to hold the, the score pad. That's pretty cool. And that comes out. And which one? Yeah. Dust of the model. Which one? It's dust of the model. This one here is dust, the one you're holding. And her, her name is Dust. I don't know, maybe she's seen Little Britain. All right, so um, I think she's called Dust because she comes from the desert. And what is there a lot in the desert? I think sand and dust and stuff like that, so that's why she's called Dust. I don't know if you noticed this as well, but this, um, even this bit here has nice padding here just to sort of make sure that whatever sits there sort of doesn't bounce around too much. Um, yeah, not sure if you're supposed to leave those cardboard bits there or not, but we'll see how we go. Um, so, should we have a look at some of the cards, I guess? Okay, so let's have a look at these, you get an idea of some of the challenge cards. So, um, challenge cards will be either sort of associated with uh, the three different sort of locations. So you can go to the, um, uh, the Droska Ring and do, a loca uh, do an action. I think this actually might be the, is that Lamara Stadium? I'm not sure, and this one might be Droska Ring, uh, and then this will be the Chronoseum. Um, 
And so yeah, so if you're at that location and you have one of these in your hand, you can try and roll dice to complete the events and you have to sort of roll these symbols. So you have to get this symbol to score the card. If you can roll this symbol as well, that sort of just gives you an extra extra bonus as well. And essentially, so if you score the card, you get to place this under your player board. Gives you a little bonus here, you're sort of trying to do some set collection with those and they can help you with the monsters. And I think uh, these symbols are aligned with your different um, wheels here. So if you were to do, yeah, there, there we go. There's that triangle one we just saw. So if you completed that previous event I just showed you, you would get to go up this track um, for however many of those successes or here, where would it go? Yeah, so you'd get to go up one once on the track. If you rolled that one die and succeeded with the card, if you were able to roll two of them with this bonus one here, you would get, you'd still complete the card, but you'd also get a, a bonus bump on the track. Oop, that looks like lunch. <laughs> we'll, we'll cut to the next, uh, next scene. Here we go. Um, just before the food guy gets up the, the stairs, we'll quickly have a look at these. So these are um, plot effects. Oh, oh, these are, oh, you know what, these, okay, so plot effects. I think these are from the solo, the solo game. These are stunt, that's what they're called, not talent, stunt cards. And this is what you get at the Chronoseum. So if you get these cards, you can just sort of keep them in your hand and then sort of play them at any point in your turn. Um, all right, so this next deck looks like um, these are like the player cards so you have your uh, your character so I think these are I forget what these are called but one of your decks sort of allows you to sort of draw more and more of these so you can sort of give your character like uh, special 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 abilities basically so a bit like player powers but you can if you choose to sort of level up your character this way you can have lots of player powers yeah I like that they give you a little um, yeah, a little back sheet or backstory sheet here, backstory card, um, and also a little like uh, play guide, a little hint, and uh, maybe even some suggestions like what to do in your first game. So yeah, that's really that's really good advice. Uh, one of my mates actually uh, advocates this sort of stuff in in games a lot. He, he's always talking about games should do this more. So I think you'll be happy with that. Okay, so these are the market cards you can get um, at the uh, Drosker Ring. So. Here the Drosker ring. It looks like you're mostly paying fruit, it looks like. So, uh, and yeah, these give you various sort of bonuses and things. So whether, you know, trade in fruit for different types of resources like the shells or uh, more dice or um, whatever this rule is uh, for each challenge, for each, um, is that Drosker challenge you have completed? Okay, I mean, oh, that's like little bonus mini objectives sort of thing. So yeah, all sorts of things you can get in that market. So that'll make that pretty dynamic, you know, change up game to game, whatever comes out in that market. All right, the objectives. So these are like the secret objectives. Um, I wonder if these are based on character. So like if you're, it does have a picture of each of the characters. So I wonder if like there's a specific set for Dust and a specific set, set for um, Echo and so forth. Yeah, it looks like it is. So yeah, that's interesting. I wonder if, their play styles and their their uh, special decks lend themselves to certain strategies so they don't sort of just say hey you can do anything you want they sort of say oh well these are the objectives that they're probably going to suit more and, and stuff so that's interesting okay so just quickly player aids um yeah just gives you a breakdown of the dice tech tree there um and yeah then just a traditional sort of you know what you do on your turn player aid Okay, and some of the symbols and point scoring, that's good. Okay, looks pretty good. Um, and then, yeah, the fold, that's where all the, the folders, where all the monsters come from. So, well, it looks like there's different difficulty levels for the monsters too, so you can sort of mitigate or, you know, modify the challenge level of your game. Um, yeah, so different monsters, and these are quite cool. They sort of come out and they, they have like a series of like target dice rolls you need to sort of make and, um, various ones give you different sort of bonuses and you level up as normal for completing them but you can also sort of team up with someone so you can come and place a few dice on this uh, and then someone else can come along and attack the monsters also you're sort of teaming up to, to take them down and if they uh, if you do take them down you get these rewards or maybe the person who oh here we go the kill bonus you get a little bump there but I think if you participate at all maybe you get this reward as well um, but if the monster gets through, if you, if you guys don't as a team defeat it, 
uh, it will do some sort of like negative effect against all the people who didn't attack it, I think, or something like that. But uh, yeah, these sort of travel down a bit of a track. And so you've got like a, two turns, I'd say at most, to, um, to take any individual one out. And yeah, they're all different, all have their own sort of different um, unique abilities and features. So this one here, two-headed monster, or I think this one is actually two different monsters, so that's why there's like the dice are sort of separated. So you can kill one, but then the other one is still alive sort of thing there. Um, yeah, and all sorts of different sea creatures. Um, yeah, and you can see they, they start to sort of ramp up in difficulty, so they got more dice spots, they're harder to kill. Okay, so we'll have a look at um, Angler's Cove now, Ang Angler's Cove expansion. Uh, so you can see it says, now plays um, up to five with an additional character, which is that um, gecko guy or whatever it is, frog, frog, frog man, um, and a new island board. So yeah, it so adds an extra player and adds a new uh, board, so like an extra set of locations you can go, I guess, uh, worker placement spots. Um, Okay, yeah, it looks like you get more resources. So it looks like you get uh, the, the base game resources because this is obviously designed to be a, um, a, a retail expansion. Um, and you know, you get your um, standee and the, these would be cardboard tokens and that sort of thing. Um, looks like it does come with extra dice, I guess, for the, uh, the fact that um, you can have more players so you need a bigger dice pool to share from. Um, and they look like they look that looks like there was plenty of space in here, yeah, for those dice to sort of fit in to make these full. I'm, I'm thinking, um, yeah. So that's all good. And it looks if you look over here, it looks like there's there's a room there. You can put an extra location on top of here. So it looks like everything from here is going to go in there. So let's have a let's have a look. Okay. So punch boards, tokens. Here's the location. So I think this sort of goes off to the the side of where you, you place them all. Um, makes a nice little scene. Uh, you got your rules. Oh, Edward's very excited by this expansion. He, I think he really wants to play Sagashi. There we go, little hang gliding guy. Okay, yep. He's got a little beetle friend or something. Little bug there. Okay. Um, and yeah, more dice. Are these different dice? No, I think they're the same. They're the same. Um, get some more dice there, some more market cards. These, I wonder if this is, if you're supposed to sort of slide these into the Droska ring market and add some sort of, um, this probably gives you a way to get rid of your um, outcast tokens by spending the outcast token. So it makes them valuable. This is probably like quite a good card. Like that's getting a dice and a shell is probably pretty good, but if you don't manage to get rid of that outcast thing to buy this in time, if someone else snags it before you and you're, you're left at the end of the game with a bunch of outcast tokens, that's probably bad. Um, okay. More dice. And this is um, Sagashi's deck here. I wonder if the characters have their own sort of starting challenges that they can start with. Um, extra... Monster and player aid, and yeah, it looks like extra um, secret objectives for uh, Sagashi there. So yeah, all right, well, pretty good. Very excited to play this. This like, it looks great. Um, all the uh, gameplay videos I've seen of it look, look amazing. Um, yeah, can't wait to get this one to the table. So that's uh, Tidal Blades, Heroes of the Reef. Just saw this. Uh, as I was putting the uh, the box lid back on, this is on the inside of the uh, the box cover. So, <laughs> fantastic quality, great production, looks amazing. Anyway, <laughs> catch you later, guys. Bye.